What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to Sport Guns. Today, I'm going to try to provide you guys a guide as far as trying to deal with the AG challenge because this is a game mode where we can actually get a EX generic memory. Now, the first thing to note about this thing is that these are the characters that you're primarily going to be using in this game mode. Now, this is something that kind of restricts you as far as what characters you can use. I'm not really sure how I feel about it. I think for some players, it kind of sucks, but they have used the most recent collaboration characters. They have used characters that we have used in the past. I mean, they even have Cassandra in here, which is pretty awesome, guys. I mean, there's a lot of really great characters in here, a lot of characters that people would have pulled for. And if you don't have any of these characters, you're going to be up a crap creek uh, in this game mode for sure, because you need to have your boost synchronization on for these characters so they don't get groggy, guys. So that way you can do a lot more damage to Gennets throughout this entire fight. So that's the first thing to know is that you're going to be needing some of these characters. So one thing that Netmarble did for us that was really cool is that they provided the right colors for us to have the advantage in this game mode. So we have yellow, red, and purple. That's the only colors that are available in here. And this is actually really good because Gennets is a green, blue, and purple right he fluctuates between all these colors he starts off as green then he goes to blue then he goes to purple right well whenever you have a red that's going to have an advantage against green whenever you have a purple that's going to have against blue and whenever you have a yellow that's going to have an advantage against purple so they provided all the right colors for you and really guys like whatever character you're using here as long as you have this boost synchronization all the way maxed out on say specific character you're going to prevent them from getting groggy and you're going to be able to do a whole lot more damage to Guinness. The characters that you're using as your main damage dealers, for example, I'm going to be showing you guys Iori especially and Akira as far as my damage dealers and Kula that you really want to have them maxed out. I just don't have enough nuts, so I don't have my Kula maxed out. Now, the cool thing about what I'm going to show you guys today or cool or bad depending on how you look at it is that one team can get you more than enough points to be able to do this so when you take a look at the rewards in this system right when you jump in here and you go to reward info you're going to need 11,000 points in order to get the extra generic memory from the carnival and every time you get 20 billion in here you're going to be able to get 225 of these right well, because of Netmarble's generosity, because they did screw up with the bug yesterday as far as Aegis is concerned, where we kept getting kicked out of the system, they gave us an extra six churns in here, which is phenomenal. This event actually lasts for two weeks. I believe it's a total of 20 times or 20 churns that we actually get to do this, right? Well, considering that you get 225 of these every day, if you get 20 billion, that is 4,500 points in total just from here which means you only need 6,500 points in order to get that EX generic memory from the Carnival. And if my math is correct, what that means is that you need to score around 30 billion a day for all of the runs that Neverwell gave us here and the rest of the runs this week. So this week, before the reset, you need to score about 30 billion a run. And then next week when it resets, you need to score about 37 billion a run during that entire seven day duration. So again, throughout this entire week, you want to get at least a minimum of 30 billion a run. And then next week, you want to try to get 37 billion a run. Then that should give you enough points in order to get this EX generic memory. You guys can see I'm already right here, but 11,000 is your goal to try to get to that EX generic memory. Obviously, if you can do better, then that's definitely the way to go because these shards are actually what can re-roll that generic memory to the color that you want, and there's no RNG involved whenever you are doing that. So when it comes to the teams that you're gonna be playing with, guys, the super OP team is really gonna be Shizuru up in the lead because Shizuru's leadership is just godly, for Iori and Iori is insane. Now, if you have your Shizura at A5, then you're obviously probably going to use her as a damage dealer. She's going to do really, really well in this. So, something to note about Guinness, guys, is he starts off as a green fighter. So, your reds are going to have an advantage. Now, I've been, I've played this quite a few times, and it looks like the times kind of change as far as whenever he changes from green to blue and from blue to uh, purple. So you always need to keep an eye on that icon on top of the screen next to his health bar as far as whenever the color changes. So you make sure you're using a character that has the advantage against him. Now that isn't always the case. Like for example, maybe he ch he'll change color and it goes to blue. I'm still gonna keep using Iori if he's still alive to try to keep doing damage, right? And then I'll use Kula because she is a purple, so she has the advantage against the blue, right? You always wanna keep in mind 
what color Genitz is, so you all have a character that has the advantage, but sometimes it's not always the case, it's not always the situation. You're just going to keep using your main damage dealer if they're still alive. But the OP team, guys, on your first team is Shizuru, Pi, and Iori, because Pi and Shizuru buff up Iori tremendously with the leaderships and all the buffs. And something else to know, guys, is this set, this set that came in the Leona banner, if you have it, it is ridiculous because... This burn does apply to Gennets. You will get this 12% critical rate for an attack type fighter, which Iori is. He will benefit from all these buffs, guys, and his damage just skyrockets with it. Also, having this blast card is going to be really good, and this card is going to be really good as well for good old Iori. And as far as my imprint stones, guys, all my Iori, then you don't have to have them built the same way. This is just how the way that I have them built because I feel like I get the most damage out of them. His first stone is a volume 7 stone, his second stone is volume 4, and his third stone is volume 2. If you're just using stones from whatever volumes, that'll be fine. And then obviously these stones are going to be the best form, but if you're just using other stones, maybe some other double attack stones, that would be fine also. So for your first team, you really want a red, guys. You really want a red in here. So whether it's Shizuru, whether it's Mina, whether it's Iori, Mizey's going to be insane in this damn thing, guys. Remember, Shizuru does bump up strike skills by 40% in her kit, so you could put Shizuru on that team to bump up the strike skills, or even Akira on the first team because he bumps up increased target damage received by strike skills by 150%, so he's actually really godly as well, right? Sarah also has buffs, right? So I need these reds are going to be a necessity on your first team, and just applying whatever buffs are going to be applicable for them is going to be the best way to go. Again, guys, Pi and Shizuru are going to be the main buffing characters on that first team. And then on your second team, guys, you're going to want to have characters that are purple and yellow. But in hindsight, what I really should have done is I should have used Lung's leadership because it would at least buff up both of these characters at the same time, but especially Akira. Really great leadership for him, although his leadership is really great for strike skills. Whoever your main damage dealer is, you really want to use their leadership if it is the best leadership for them. If not, then you want to use a leadership that's obviously going to be better for them. But again, you want to have a red damage dealer on your first team, and you want to make sure that you have a purple and a yellow character for a damage dealer on the second team. Yellow, preferably, on the second team, because I think you're going to be using your yellow more often than the purple. The purple kind of gets right in the middle, and I feel like the red and the yellow are the ones that are going to be doing the most damage, as I will show you in the run that I'm going to present to you. So let's check out that run, guys. Let's see what this all entails, right? Here we go, all right? So whenever you start off the fight, guys, what you want to do is you want to build up your 3PG and do it immediately with your main damage dealer, right? In my case, it is Iori. Iori really is godly in this thing. So I just do my 3PG, and then what you want to do is you want to make sure you get behind Guinness at all costs. Do not get in front of them. In the very first beginning of the phase, you can just pretty much go full force and go crazy like what I'm doing with my Yori, get my 3PG ready, and do my 3PG again. You want to do your 3PGs as often as possible, guys. It will make a world of difference in your damage throughout the entire fight. And granted, you might lose some other characters. They might die, but you can't get away. Now, when you see what I've done here, I've gotten away from Guinness. I've, I got some distance here, and this is something that's nice about Iori because his first skill has a lot of range, right? You do not, whenever that tornado shows up, whenever Guinness breaks out that giant tornado, you don't want to get in that because it actually will debuff your immunity and kill you pretty much instantly. So you always want to stay away from that damn thing, and you always want to be behind Guinness. See how I got behind him, and then I hit my concentration, right? And then I dodge that attack, okay? Then I do my 3PG again, and look at the damage that Iori is doing. It is ridiculous how much damage... He's doing it. You see the, the rotation and how I'm trying to approach this, guys. I just do my 3PG. I try to get behind Guinness. I try to unlock the concentration and just start letting it fly and always making sure that I'm behind Guinness, okay? Oh, got attacked there. Not good, not good. Hit the 3PG. And you see that's just what I'm doing over and over and over. Now, there we got caught. So we're now we're going to try to do some damage here, right? We're going to hit our concentration. Okay, now we are at a disadvantage right now because Guinness is a blue, right? But since he already is still in there, I still want to go ahead and try to do some damage to him. And we're just going to go ahead and hit that 3PG. All right, there we go. All right, now because Guinness is a blue, I'm going to go ahead and use my Kula because Kula actually has an advantage against the blue because she's a purple, right? So I'm using my Kula right now, right? And unfortunately, the Groggy took us out of it. 
Okay, Guinness is still a blue, right? So we're going to keep using Kula. We're going to use her concentration, all right? And we're just trying to do as much damage as we can. Now you see that Guinness changed to a purple. So now Akira has the advantage because he's a yellow. So now I'm going to be using Akira throughout the rest of the fight until the very end because he's just going to do more damage. He's just going to have the advantage against uh, Guinness. And plus, in all honesty, he's just stronger, guys. And again, I'm playing him the same way. Trying to do my 3PG as much as possible. Now, something that's nice about Akira is the fact that he just kind of zigzags back and back and forth whenever he's doing his skills. So he doesn't get caught in Guinness's attacks as easily as, say, other characters that you would use here, guys. Like... He does, he's, he's freaking amazing in this, guys. Honestly, like these, all these characters are really, really awesome in this. Okay. All right, I'm trying to plow some damage. Do my 3PG, right? I mean, we've hit 370 billion, which is pretty damn awesome, guys. Really amazing. Again, I really wish I would have used, maybe if I would have used Long's Leadership, it would have been better, especially for male types, but it's all good. It's all good. This is like more than enough damage. Still a pretty damn good run, right? So, I mean, we hit 390 billion in this run, but you guys see the way that I'm playing this, right? The way that I'm trying to get as much damage as possible is that I'm pretty much just bringing in my main damage dealer. I want to try to build up my 3PG uh, immediately. So what I do is I go in there. If I don't build up that 3PG from my card set, I'll go ahead and restart the fight and do it again. And if I build up my 3PG, then I do the 3PG. I try to always make sure I get behind Guinness, unlock the concentration, let it fly, build up my 3PG again, try not to get hit by Guinness, and do, do my 3PG again. Over and over and over, this is the process. And in order to help you guys, Keep your level 90 or level A1 characters alive. You can always throw on certain card sets. Like I threw on this set right here, which adds a lot of HP to my pie in order to help her keep alive. You could also try throwing on like this card here because this card will decrease all the active skills by 100%. So hopefully it will increase the survivability of the character to put it on. Actually, this card does not work on Shizuru. Just to let you guys know, it only works on all-star fighters and Shizuru is not an all-star fighter she is not an all-star fighter she's a kof original so that card doesn't even work right but on pai chin it would work and maybe if pai is using her skills over and over and over having her hyper armor up more often maybe she won't die as fast i mean that could also help you out as well but try using you know a red damage dealer on your first team whoever it may be and try having some kind of buffs that going to apply to that character and then make sure that you have you know like a purple or yellow yellow especially on the second team and then maybe have some kind of buffs applying to that character as well to try to get it done as far as the builds guys like you know i'm just using the op set for kula he's completely maxed out right and i'm using the op set for akira he's completely maxed out right there's his set right there all right he's completely maxed out and then long hair right we're just using a rugal set for her to try to get some extra buffs again maybe if i had used her leadership it would have been better maybe if i had used that leona card on pi that would have been better so hopefully these tips will help you out as far as trying to get the highest score possible in order to get that ex generic memory if you guys have any other questions about this or maybe other other kind of team-ups that you would like to try put it down in the comments down below and i will try to respond to it and let me know how y'all doing in this game mode let me know what you guys do think about this game mode i think it's pretty fantastic that a character like Iori, who is in the current banner, is actually freaking insane in this thing. So, guys, let me know how y'all doing in the game. And I do stream on Twitch at 9 p.m. to plus 7 time. Link is in the description below. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Y'all take care and have a good one. See everybody. Take care.